Well, after the government bailed out AIG in 2008, former American Express CEO Harvey Golub took the helm as chairman of the insurance company and was integral in picking its current CEO, Bob Ben Moshe. Just months into his tenure, though, Ben Moshe and Golub clashed, and Golub took the fall. He stepped down. Now a trustee at the American Enterprise Institute, Golub sat down with me for an exclusive interview, his first in 10 years. I asked him, despite their differences, does Ben Moshe deserve the credit for turning around AIG? He certainly does. Uh, at, at the time that Bob came in, which was just after the time I came in, mm -hmm. um, it was I was on a committee with with two other uh, directors to find the CEO, when, when we brought we brought Bob in. We agreed on on the rough elements of the strategy, Bob and the board together, that we would slow down this exit process, that we would we would seek to get to rebuild parts of the company before selling it, that we wanted to pay back the government, but we had to do that out of the sale of assets at reasonable prices. And, and Bob um, was responsible for executing that strategy and for bringing in people who could um, effectively manage the, the enterprise while that was being done. And he brought in a significant number of good people. Mm -hmm. uh, and he provided direct leadership to, uh, to all of those people and, and to the, uh, the operations of the company. So, so I think Bob deserves a great deal of, of credit for what's been accomplished and, and what will be accomplished. How do you think so far Bob is handling the um, this, the sale of Treasury stake uh, in AIG and other you know restructuring efforts? I mean, do you think so far that he's doing a good job? Um, so far as I can see, yes. Um, I think the, the IPO of AIA was too large. Um, and, and therefore, some money was left on the table because AI has has uh, has done well since then, which was which was to be expected. Right. Uh, normally, if you do a big public listing in Hong Kong, uh, a lot of it is pre-sold, and there is normally a substantial discount. Mm -hmm. So you really do want to in Hong Kong want to get into stocks early. Uh, th therefore, the larger the stake that AIA sold, the less it would share in the upside. Right. Uh, the more cash it would get more quickly and pay back the Fed. And, and in that trade-off between, between uh, um, accumulating more value or paying off the government quicker, I would have opted for creating more value. Mm. The, 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 the capitalization of AIG is a, a thin sliver of equity on a mountain of debt. So a few billion dollars makes a huge change in the in the value of the equity. Right. And um, uh, selling a smaller port portion of AIA at the outset would have would have created more value. Create more value in the, for later on. Yeah. Um, but are you in agreement that AIA should start? Or not, excuse me, in agreement that AIG um, and the Treasury should start now selling those shares sure. over the next two years. Yeah, the government ought to get out as quickly as possible. What's the compelling reason to buy AIG, Harvey? Uh, there are two major businesses. You mean for a shareholder? Yes, for a shareholder. Uh, two major businesses: the property casualty business, which is a um, a worldwide um, right. uh, property casualty business that is really quite superb, and a um, a largely U.S.-based uh, fin uh, individual financial services business selling uh, selling insurance products. But would you buy AIG? I mean, do you think AIG is an attractive investment? Um, it's now a financial play rather than a business play. As, as, you know, when you sell all these pieces, what's going to be left because of this mountain of debt and this sliver of equity? So the equity can change a lot. Right. Um, longer would you term. Buy it? Yeah, longer term. Um, AIG shouldn't exist. Uh, in long, longer term, once all these other pieces are sold, the property and casualty business charter ought to be an independent company and. Uh, uh, the, the Sun America business ought to be an independent company. There's no strategic fit between them. What it was, was a very large number of independent operations that had no strategic synergy beyond financial leverage. And the, the strategy of the company, implicit strategy of the company, was to take a AAA rating and apply that rating to businesses that could not earn that rating on their own uh, and therefore create greater leverage in those businesses that would otherwise be the case. Mm -hmm. That is not strategic logic for building an entity. And in the process of doing that, there were inadequate control systems. 
um, inadequate oversight of, of many of the, of the products, uh, inadequate analysis of the risks in those, in those businesses, and a mismatch of assets and liabilities that were quite substantial. Essentially a hedge fund, as Bernanke said. Uh, I, I wouldn't, uh, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily call it a hedge fund because hedge funds are often managed with a, with a much better sense of the risks involved. Hmm. Th this was not. This was just completely different. This was off th the range. This was completely different. So that was a business that, as it was constructed, was was not was not sustainable. So, so it is a shell, but it ought to be. Briefly on Wall Street, you know, I, last year I was watching, um, obviously a lot of the hearings of Goldman Sachs and and and, and other banks being hauled up to. Uh, to Congress to sort of justify, you know, the bailouts and the taxpayer money. Um, and I remember specifically that there was a lot of exchanges with Lloyd Blankfein, you know, talking about, you know, was AIG used as a backdoor bailout for Goldman Sachs? Do you believe that's the case? Well, a AIG had counterparty risk with a number of institutions, including including uh, Goldman. AIG will pay off all of its debt holders, 100 cents on the dollar. It will pay off the Treasury, 100 cents on the dollar. It will pay off the Fed, uh, 100 cents on the dollar, both with interest. Uh, and it will be recapitalized and an ongoing prosperous business. So the end result um, has been favorable. None of the large banks that were part of the bailout, that were counterparties to, to AIG, have failed subsequently. So, it is, so one can look back and say, maybe I could have done it smarter or better or cheaper. But maybe the smarter, better, cheaper would not have had the same benign outcome. I, I don't know that. What I do know is the outcome was reasonable. But implicit in that statement, though, or the statements that we've heard about this backdoor bailout, is that Goldman gets favoritism from Was from from Washington. It gets favoritism uh, all around. Do you agree with that? No, Goldman doesn't get favoritism. Uh, in some ways, Goldman is toxic uh, in in Washington be because of of its success. People are people are in fact jealous of its of its success. Well, you know, I was looking through um, some articles right before our interview, and um, you know, one of the articles that came out, I think it was last month or something along those lines where um, the New York Fed uh, president had released his daily book uh, or daily schedule uh, through, I think, from January 2009 to, to July of 2010. But within that, uh, he had met with you mm -hmm. among several other people. And I was just curious to know what you guys talked about, what you two talked about during that meeting. There were a couple of occasions when I talked to Mr. Dudley about how to get some help on that. And, and there were a couple of occasions where we talked about the strategy of the company and, and the financial structure and what the issues were. But those were not those were not uh, significant ones. Mm -hmm. Dealing with the Fed, the New York Fed was um, uh, was really a pleasure. Uh, people are very smart. Uh, they're very focused. Um, they have a very good sense of what of what needs to get done, and and they were easy to deal with on a on a very straightforward basis. And they didn't leak. They didn't leak. They didn't leak. So we could have a conversation with people if that would not appear in the Wall Street Journal the next day. Who else? Who did? You, who would you talk to that you felt was getting leaked? You felt the information was getting leaked. Oh, Treasury leaks like a like a sieve.